This is what we're making today and I cannot wait to share the full process with you. Let's get started. It's Romeo Wednesday. Hello everyone and welcome to Crafting with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda. And thank you so much for joining me today. I have some exciting news to share and I cannot wait to share it with you. Heat Transfer Warehouse actually has a brand of metallic puff. It is called Walla Cut Metallic Puff and it comes in red. It also comes in silver, gold, and blue. And guess what? It's in stock. I may or may not have already ordered more. Well, I am using this. I'm demonstrating how to use this in this tutorial. I'm also going to show you how to cut my newest template, which is Chosen. This is how it looks, and you already know I'm going to say I love it. I love the way this one came out. However, I also like the ombre version of it. Stay tuned so you can see that at the end. I'm going to show you what the metallic puff looks like, the red metallic. It is fantastic and I already fell in love with it. I'm going to take you step by step through the full process the way that I always do. And at the end of this video, if you find it helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Now, without further ado, let's look at the materials and jump right in to Leonardo Design Studio. The materials I'm using for today's tutorial include my Caesar Romeo, two black Gildan soft style shirts. Both of them are cotton. This is KTM Mask and Rocket Flock. Both of these were purchased from Heat Transfer Warehouse. This is a Caesar high tack mat. This is a wax pen and a trim painter. Both of these can be purchased from Amazon. I'll be using rhinestones in the SS10 size that I purchased from the Baby's Booty website. It is linked below the video. The three colors I'm using are gold crystal, neon white, and candy apple. For the vinyl portion of the tutorial, I'm using the new Walla Puff. This is Puff Heat Transfer Vinyl. The white and gold are both Caesar Heat Transfer Vinyl. I'm also going to use this um, to place my template on after the flock has been cut with the Romeo. These templates can also be purchased from the Baby's Booty website. This is the perfect way to store your rhinestone templates after they have been cut. Now let's head over to the computer so I can show you how to bring the file in and prepare it for cutting. I am in Leonardo Design Studio. The first thing I'm going to do is click File and Open. I'm going to go to the file where I have it saved on my computer. I am bringing in the file that is not an ombre template. So I'm going to select chosen. I can see the size is 11.069 by 5.132. That's the size it should be when it comes in to Leonardo Design Studio. I'm going to click open. I'm going to bring the file in as a cut only. I'm going to select next. I can see that there are three colors, black, purple, and green. That means it's going to prompt me to have three mats. I'm going to click apply. I'm not changing the size because this is the exact right size. I will click send design. Now let's see what it looks like if I were to bring in the ombre template. I will click on the plus right here. I'll click file. I'll click open. This is the ombre template. It's the exact same size as the one that is not the ombre template. If I were to bring this one in, I'd click open. 
I can look right here. I'm still going to bring it in as cut only. I can see that there are three colors here. Let's click next. Oh, actually there are two colors, black and purple, but I'm going to show you how to do this. I can click apply. Now when the ombre template comes in, I can see that the ombre is, you know, a little bit different. It's a little bit hard to see. What I would suggest you do is still not change the size, but maybe change the outline color. So on the file, I would right click on it. I will select ungroup. And now I can see the different colors and I can see anything that I want to change. So right here for the outline, let's go to the outline. Let's see, make sure that just the outline is selected. Okay, so right there, the outline is selected. I will go over here to the properties panel. I click on it and I would change it maybe just to like pink and let's click apply. So now the outline is pink. The top of the ombre is black. The bottom of the ombre will be purple. And then the inner part or the scripture is a different color. Now, if you want that to cut along with the outline, you can do it like that or you can change the color. That's perfectly up to you. But if I were to send the ombre template just like it is right now, it should prompt me to have three mats. Let's look at it. So if I click send, let's click send again. So I have the black layer, which includes the scripture. Then I have the bottom layer, which is the purple. And then I have the outline layer, which is separate. So however you want to do it is perfectly fine. I'm going to click back because I'm not brushing in the ombre template. I am brushing in the, the, rain, the plain regular template. I'm going to click send. Okay, I'm going to click send again, and I should still have three mats. The black outline, the scripture, and the inner part of the file, I'm going to click send to cutter. And I am going to get the mats loaded. Everything I'll do from here will be back on the camera. The cut setting that I like to use for my flock is a cut speed of 10 and a force of 65. But no matter what speed and force you use, I recommend cleaning your blade. So I have been cutting a lot of rhinestone flock with my Romeo. So what I'm going to do, you can see that there is a lot of flock there. What I typically do is just take a ball of aluminum foil and just push the blade out and just kind of poke it through the blade just to clean that flock off. Make sure your blade is going back in the way that it's supposed to and that it's not sticking out more than it's supposed to. Okay, so I'm just poking it through there several times and see now I can tell that my blade is up too high. So I'm going to make sure that it's down in there where it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be sticking up that high. So it should be like that. I'm going to put it back in here and then I'm going to get the flock loaded on my mat. So now let's do that. Cut speed of 10 force 65. I feel like it's better to have more flock on the mat than not than not enough. So I put mine right here to be right in between the six and the seven. And now I'm going to load the mat into the machine. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. All the way down. And then what I'm going to do is lock the clasp on the back of my Romeo and I'm going to send the first part of the design to the cutter. The first part that I'm cutting is the outline layer. So I'm going to go back here, pull the lever up and I'm going to send this to the cutter. I'm going to click yes and it will start to get this cut out. Now that the machine has finished cutting, I'm going to release the lever and I'm going to cut the flock away from the mat.
So the next part of the template is the scripture, which is John 15, 16. So I only need a small piece of flock for that. So I can actually see if there's enough left here. I feel like I do have enough right here at the bottom. So I'm actually just going to cut away here. Let me double check, make sure I'm not cutting something that I need. I'm gonna insert this back into my Romeo. Make sure it's all the way down in the corner. Close this lever, go to the next part of the template and send that to the cutter. I'll let this cut, but I'm going to move the camera overhead because the process is the same. Now we have an overhead view of everything. So here is the mat, the plastic chopping mat that came from the package. And this is the first part of the template. I'm going to remove the pink flock from the backing and place it on the template. The template, remember, is just a way to store, I mean, the mat is just a way to store the template. So let's see if it cut. So I still see a lot of dots that did not cut out. That's not typical of my Romeo, but everybody has bad days. Okay, let's see. So I see a lot of like five dots in a row that didn't cut right here. So let's keep looking. Looks good. Okay, so if it's just those five, I'm doing great. Six. Then I see a whole row right here. So what I can do is I can stick this to like an old mat. I can stick it to my table and then just try to peel it up again. Let's do that. I'm just going to stick. I've never done this before, but I'm doing it today. Let's stick it to the table and try to get those remaining dots to stay put because we don't need them. And if they don't stay put, I'll use my wax pen and just push them through because we don't need them at all. There are a lot of ways to handle this. You can use a lint roller, a lot of different ways to handle it. I'm just doing it this way today. This is not typically how I do it, but I'm willing to try different things. Okay, that did not really help, but they are coming up fairly easy, so that's a good thing. Okay, so I think I have all of the dots out now. And so now what I'm going to do is place them, place this on this mat. I'm gonna put this right here at the top. Okay, now we have the second part, which is the scripture. Let's see how this cut. See if it cut nicely. And if it didn't, we will work with it. Okay, you did very good. Did a very, very good job. Okay, so there is the scripture, and then let's get the bottom part of the template. Sometimes this flock is very sticky. I don't know if you can. See how this like very, very sticky? I don't really like that when it does that. But 
the goal is to not have any of those dots still filled in. And I see a lot right there. So let me try another tactic, just using an old mat. So I have an old mat right here. I'm just gonna stick this to the mat and see if that will help me get some of these dots up. So I don't throw any of my old mats away. I use them, I just repurpose them for rhinestones when I have problems like this. Okay, so some of the dots are sticking, that's great. You don't wanna to peel too hard because you don't wanna stretch the holes too much. Oh, this is great. Got a lot of them right there. Oh, this is awesome. Look at that. Okay, let's see what I have left. Move this down right here to the bottom. And this is great. Everything fits on one. So I can still use the other side of this template or this other side of this mat for another template. So that is the purpose of the chopping mats. Let me show you a couple of other chopping mats just so you can get a full picture of how they are used. So here is the next template in the series. This one is called Strong. Um, here is Chosen, the ombre version of it. Here is, let's see, this is Trusting God. So you get the picture. We just use the chopping mats to save the rhinestone templates because they can be brushed in over and over and over again. All right, so now we have that. What I'm going to do is brush in the outline first and the outline is going to be neon white so i'm using ss10 hot fix rhinestones and the color is neon white so what i do is open it up pour a generous amount just across the template then i close it up and I use my trim painter to just brush it in. So I'm going to just brush this in in a somewhat of a circular motion. And the goal is to make sure that all of the rhinestones are face up. None of them should be face down because I need the, ad the adhesive to be on the on the bottom. This with my finger double checking to make sure that I don't have any doubles. It looks good. I think this is, there should be a hole right there, but I'm gonna double check that. All right, so now what I'm going to do is put these rhinestones back in this container. Also going to put the rubber band back on. So now I have all of this brushed in. I'm going to get the KTM mask and I'm going to cut a piece of this that's big enough to cover this whole area. So I can look at it like this, say, yep, that's big enough. And I can just cut a piece. And what I'm going to do is just remove this from the bathroom. And 
I am going to use the taco method. Now, if you think this is too sticky, you can stick it to your clothes a couple of times and unstick it. But I'm going to use the taco method. I'm going to place this down very fast. I'm not going to hesitate. So just one, two, three, go. Just like that. And now I'm going to make sure that all of the rhinestones are stuck to the transfer mask. It's called KTM mask, okay? So some of these are stuck in here because of that sticky adhesive stuff. So I gotta get those out. And I think I'll put these on individually after I press the shirt because I don't like the way this looks down here. So I'm just gonna take these off and this one too. And I'm gonna press it without those being on there and I'll press that separately. But for right now, I'll just leave that template right there I'll move these rhinestones over to the side and I will brush in the inner part of Chosen. And for that, I'm using Candy Apple. Hot Fix SS10. And just to be on the safe side, I can just put this backing on my template for safekeeping. So there's that. All right, let's brush in the Candy Apple SS10. I have my first shirt. I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to do a quick pre-press, about five seconds. The heat press is set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 seconds. Have a crease down the middle. Now I'm going to press the first layer, which is the outline. Always start with the outline first. That's the outline. Come down about three fingers from the collar. There's the first layer. Let's press the second layer, which is the inside part of Chosen. Here's the inner layer of Chosen. Make sure it's fitting right in there, in the template, right where it's supposed to go. Looks great. So now I have John 1516, and this is gold chrome. So I'm going to remove this. And I'm going to Add John 15, 16. And I'm going to, I'll clean this up once I finish pressing this part. So now the bling shirt is complete. This is the finished shirt. And what am I going to say? I love it. I 
love it. I love red. Red is my favorite color and I love this combination. Now let's cut out the heat transfer vinyl and get it pressed on the second shirt. I am back in Leonardo Design Studio. When I'm ready to cut the heat transfer vinyl, what I'm going to do is click on File, Open, and I'm only going to bring in the SVG. So I would click on Chosen SVG. I would click Open. This is what the file looks like. I'm still going to bring it in as a cut only, just like this. And I would select Next. And I can see that it is going to be three different colors. If I want it to be filled in like that, I can click this. However, it, it doesn't matter. What happen, What matters is what I weed on the mat. I'm going to click apply. This is the file. Because this is heat transfer vinyl, I can make this as big or as small as I want it to. So I can stretch it all the way out or I can make it all the way small like this. I can put it just like as a left chest. I could put it on the sleeve. I could put it on a mug. I can put it wherever I want to um, with this template. Now, what I would typically do if I were making, let's just say a large shirt, I would probably bring the size of the vinyl up to Maybe you're right at about 11 or uh, this size seems fine. I might want to make it a little bit taller. I like it like this. It doesn't matter what color I change these to because what actually matters is what I put on the mat. And the thing to remember about this file when you're resizing it is size it all together. Don't try to size the inside part separately from the outline, separate, separately from the scripture. Keep it all together as you are sizing or resizing. OK, so now I like it. Let me get a little bit taller. OK, I like it like this and I am ready to click send design and I want it all to be moved to separate layers. I'm going to click send and I will be prompted to have three mats. Now, because this is heat transfer vinyl, I know I need to mirror this. So I'm going to select mirror and I'm going to get this mirrored. Now for the scripture, I am using the Wallacut Puff vinyl and I'm excited about it because this will be my first time trying it out. So we are going to get this prepared. All of these different mats will be mirrored. All of the vinyl will be mirrored. I'm going to click send to cutter and everything I'll do once again will be back on the camera. I'm using a cut speed of 10 and a force of 30. This is regular Caesar heat transfer vinyl and it is mirrored. I'm going to click send to cutter and let my Romeo cut this out. Here's my first layer of vinyl. I'm just going to use my weeding tool and remove any of the vinyl that I'm not planning to press on the shirt. So I'm just removing all of the pieces of vinyl that will not be pressed on the shirt. The pressing instructions for the Walla Puff, Walla Cut Metallic Puff say uh, 275 degrees Fahrenheit, medium pressure, 10 seconds, then repress it for 10 seconds. It doesn't say to add anything on top, so I'm not 
and this is a warm peel. So because the temperature should be 275 for this, I just made the temperature 275. I'll press all of the vinyl at 275 degrees and I'll just get the first two layers tacked down. First thing I'm going to do is what I always do is start with a pre-press and get a crease down the middle. So here's my shirt, I'm going to crease it down the middle. So the outline of this is gold. And I'm gonna come down about three fingers from the top and here we go. Let's see if it's straight. It's straight, it's good, okay. Okay, there's the first layer and it already looks good. Now I'm going to add the white layer inside, just lining it up the way that it should be, making sure that it fits in there, snug as a bug in a rug. Puff. So I'm going to press this for 10 seconds. So just wipe it off a little bit, see if I can peel it. Still coming up. Let me kind of fan it. Try it again. Oh my goodness. I can already tell you I'm in love with it. And it hasn't even puffed. All right, I'm going to add parchment paper and I'm gonna press it again for 10 seconds. OMG. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. Look at this. Look at that puff. You already know I'm going to say I love it. Look at that puff and it's red. I love so, it. So these are the two shirts that were made during this tutorial. This is the rhinestone version of it. This is the regular not ombre cut of the word chosen with the scripture John 15, 16. And this is what the template looks like in ombre. I did not cut this one, but this one is how it looks if you choose to use the ombre template. It comes in a bundle on my Etsy shop and in my um, on my website. They are both $6.99 for the bundle. This is the one we did with heat transfer vinyl. This is chosen with the Walla cut metallic puff in red that I love. I think it's gorgeous. Uh, this is another option of it that I'm wearing right here. And I also have an, an additional option to show you that I did not um, demonstrate in today's tutorial, but this is what it looks like. As promised, I will give you a sneak peek of the one that's coming up on Sunday. It's going to be released on my Etsy shop and on my website. That one is called Strong, and I've already pressed it. This is what it looks like. So I used Caesar Glitter Vinyl, and the scripture is 2 Corinthians 12 and 10, Strong. And this is what it looks like in rhinestones. So you can see what that looks like. Now, this one is ombre. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. I am super excited about trying the Wallet Cut Puff. I think it is gorgeous. I think that I'm going to be probably ordering more of it. Hopefully you have found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye.